Welcome to Bansko, Bulgaria. I'm here exploring for the day of this town that is about three hour bus ride from Sofia, Bulgaria. It's a town rich in history. It has a ski hill right next door and in the summertime there's even a jazz festival. Before we get started please hit subscribe to my channel, like this video below and let me show you how I got here from Sofia. Let's get going. One layer on. <laughs> Let's go to band school. <laughs> Okay, so even though I had my uh, ticket even printed from buying it online, they still said that I needed to come and get a receipt at the information desk. So I just visited the one station of the company that I'm traveling with, which is Union Canoe, something like this. Yeah, now I got the ticket and I've got about half an hour, so I'm just gonna wait. I'm gonna go to the bathroom and then we'll get on the bus. town of Biovaiograd and something I like to do when I'm on a bus is ask someone like how long's the stop and then also kind of make eye contact with them so if the bus is leaving and they don't see you on the bus maybe they'll make sure the driver knows that you're not there and then also they move the bus while I was in the bathroom so these two ladies were like oh no no the bus is over there now people are nice you just have to ask smile kill them with kindness I've arrived in Bansko, Bulgaria. That was a really smooth bus ride. It's about three and a half hours and we stopped in that one town, which was Blagovgrad. Probably mispronouncing that. Grad means city. It definitely was a bigger city. And in here, it's definitely like one to two, maybe three story buildings, giving me a little bit of ski town. It smells kind of like wood burning sawmill-y, which maybe there is some saw industry here with the mountains nearby. I was gonna go for lunch at one place that was recommended to me and I just realized that they are closed Tuesdays as well. They are also closed Mondays which is why I bumped it to do my day trip here Tuesday Wednesday. So I guess tomorrow I will go for lunch there but I'm gonna use it as a direction to walk into town and find a place for some lunch. Maybe a sandwich of sorts, something yummy. It's pretty chilly here. It's like five degrees but it uh, feels really refreshing. Okay, initial impressions as I walk more into like the core of the city center is it's kind of this weird mix of like Bavarian, ski bum. It's an interesting mix. I just went into a secondhand store, which is kind of cool. They have a bunch of secondhand ski equipment, which I appreciate. Yeah, we're just gonna walk around. Uh, 
I'm still just wandering around. It's kind of nice to just get my bearings on the street. <laughs> One restaurant owner was like, Dobra, Dobra Den is in Serbian. Very close, like Dobra Juto, Utro. I gotta learn that one still. Basically being like, good day, good afternoon. And then obviously I didn't reply. So then I said, oh, good afternoon. And then they're like, please come sit. We will treat you well. And you can sit by the fireplace as good as your grandma would treat you. Which for me, I think is funny because one, I'm not cold, so I don't need to be by the fireplace. And then two, I've never really had lunch at my grandma's house because my grandma never lived close to me. So I was like, I just laughed and walked away, which it's fine. Like I get it. They got to run a business. And it's like a dead town in here, but I just decided to turn left randomly and just gonna keep walking i don't know what's open maybe tuesdays is normally a dead day it's an absolute dead street so let's walk down it Turns out that restaurant was open. The sandwich was very good. It was nice bread, nice panini, nice cheese, nice ratatouille. Atmosphere was a bit awkward. As I was saying, atmosphere was a bit awkward because it was just me and like the chef and the owner. And it was $12.90 leva. They do take card and they have meat options and vegetarian options, even a vegan option, which is a spinach benitza. A benitza being kind of like the local bakery their version of a croissant or a burek in uh, Montenegro, I guess. But I went for some cheese in it. Uh, I'd eat there again, but yeah, just kind of an awkward spot. <laughs> so I kind of like scarped it down and I'm just gonna explore a little bit and grab a coffee and then go do the tour. <laughs> you should know about Bulgaria is a lot of places you can still smoke inside or there's a section so although I'm sitting outside it's a smoking area Thank you. Uh, yeah yeah okay <laughs> and this is a key uh, okay and Wi-Fi Okay, so I've just arrived in the guest house, let's call it. It's not quite a hotel, it's kind of Airbnb, and I almost didn't find it, but then I was like, no, I swear it's number three on this street. So I walked a little bit farther down, and then there was, let's call it the housekeeper, the grandma, I'm not sure, through some miming a tiny, tiny bit of Bulgarian, I know, and um, yeah, we managed to figure it out. She called someone, so I'm in my room. That's literally all it is. <laughs> this is the tour. <laughs> so we've got a wardrobe here. We've got a TV on the wall. It's um, a double bed. So I did book a double bed instead of two single because it's just me. And why not get a good sleep? And then we have this view. It's a little steamy right now, which is nice. It's actually quite warm in here, but I'm a little bit cold. So it's really lovely. And I have a view of the mountains. And then I have maybe my own balcony, but kind of looks like it might be shared with the room next door so i think i'm just gonna close that curtain maybe i didn't realize it when i booked it but i think it's shared bathroom because there's not another door in the room so yeah really all i need i'm just gonna warm up for a little bit here because i'm feeling quite like bones cold if that makes sense i'm gonna put all my thermals underneath my pants because these pants are kind of like stretchy, sweaty. They're perfect for a bus when you get like hot and sweaty sitting. But I'm gonna put my thermals underneath and then go do myself a guided tour that I bought. So yeah, my first impressions of Bands go so far is like, it's a really quiet, quaint town. And I feel like with anything that's off season, I try and picture it like when everyone's off this ski hill and it's like high season or there's a skiing or snowboarding event here and then also in the summertime although it's not near any body of water I can imagine like the streets are so wide and open and that people are just like drinking on their patios and having a good time so right now it just seems like really quiet and it's only 2 30 and I'm kind of regretting not taking a bus back tonight but live and learn here we are and I'm also just I think lately life has been really go 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 so 
I'm trying to treat this as like a mini vacation. This room cost me 40-ish Canadian. Put the price down here via booking.com. And why I didn't stay in a hostel is like the hostels here just seem to be like beds, probably like four beds put in this kind of room. And I don't know, I've just been working really hard and I think I'm valuing working hard and my sleep. Like I don't need the fanciest accommodations. I just need clean. So in here it looks really clean. It smells really fresh and that's really all I ask for. So this tour, what it's about is I looked up on Guru Walks and also just the world of Google about a walking tour. And that's one of the first things I usually do in a location to kind of understand the area and also give back to locals because often they're local people and it's tip based. So there is a free Bansko walking tour, but they only do them right now on Saturday and Sundays, which is fair enough. Probably they're busier days. But the coolest thing I've seen, which I haven't seen elsewhere, is that they offer a PDF downloadable. So for 15 leva, which is about 750 euros, 12, 1250 Canadian, um, I got this Google document that they've put together that I can walk around the town. They have all the Google map pins and it tells you the history about them available in English. So I think that's such a great idea. One, like I'm super happy to support the local tourism here. And then second is like amazing. I, I don't have to like go on Wikipedia and find it. I've got this document I can read as I go. So I booked that in for myself this afternoon. I think I'm going to go do that and then maybe come back here, grab dinner later. Just kind of take a chill. So that is the plan, Stan. I mean, I'm a solo traveler and I've been alone like the last five months, but I've been surrounded by people or people I recognize in the living room. So to be back like completely alone, is just a interesting feeling. I have all the time in the world because I'm not working today. I worked a little bit at the cafe just on my phone because they had Wi-Fi. So let's uh, get warmed up, get changed, and let's go to the walking tour led by myself. <laughs> So the House of Aelin is a hallmark for the greatness, economic prosperity, and spiritual aspirations of the people of Bansko. It is an image of the exquisiteness and coziness of part of the life of our predecessors, the original taste for beauty and bond to family and family virtues. With its unique wall paintings and woolwork, this house is no other like it in the Bulgarian Renaissance art. So this was the house of the painter of the main church that's in town. And we can obviously see there's some painting on the outside. It's now a protected site. No one's here. No one's asked me anything. Okay, so this is the hiding spot. This is also the room where mothers would give birth and hide with their infants for a while. We have a fireplace and then they have the secret hiding spot, which is a little sketchy. I gotta watch my head as well. This is a join to the room where they would weave and carve and do craftsmanship, the women. And then it connects. Look how short these doors are. Way like a lower than five feet. And then this room is where they slept and it got painted to be brightened up and cooked and hung out and everything. This is the toilet. Oh my God. Yes, okay, that's the toilet. <laughs> These floorboards are creeping me out. And in here, ah, to bathe. Look, it's even got a window in it. Then you come back up to the outdoor eating area. This is actually a sink where women would wash clothes or prepare food and then all that food would go down to the animals. And this is the blue room, which the owner, when he bought it, Painted to, he painted Venice and Constantinople that express a human wish for exotic lands. 
Very cool. Okay, so <laughs> there was somebody. It cost three love to go inside and she gives you like a piece of paper, which is really awesome because it explains more about what's happening in that family home, which was a really like buzzing discovery. The last item on my list is seeing the church, but I actually think I'm not gonna rush it because I've got 10 minutes. Didn't know it closed at five. Did I look that up? Nope. So I actually think I'm just going to walk around a little bit more and tomorrow I'll add that to my list to see the church because I don't think it's worth rushing it. So we'll insert the clip here. went into the holy trinity church and there's something about filming churches on the inside that just doesn't always sit quite right with me so they did have a, a no camera sign which is so hard to know with smartphones now what the rules are but inside so gorgeous the murals are so rich in color and the gold accents are definitely something that's really cool this is different in my experience the orthodox versus the catholic churches about the use of gold and i just find them stunning um, after being in uh, Sofia and also Belgrade with their large two cathedrals. And also a woman inside was fixing one of the murals. So she was restoring one of them, which I was just like fascinated by and like watched her for five minutes just to see someone actively restoring the wall and the, and the artwork and the painting. She was moving so slowly and I thought, my goodness, how long will this all take for her to do? But either way, it was like just really cool to capture that in the moment. Yeah, no donation was asked, but always encouraged when entering such type of space. So that was really cool and I'm glad I did it. I'm currently walking through the old town area of Batonsko, which we can definitely see by just the height of the windows and doors. And one of these buildings now hosts an art school, which one of the original people of Bansko brought art into Bansko and studied in Vienna and brought the art here. And now uh, it displays the art school work, which is pretty cool. So students learn, but I'm about 5'4", and we can see, well, that door is <laughs> like four feet, but even just like the height of the wall here is maybe six feet, whereas I feel like now it'd be a bit taller and these sort of stonework and um, we're here, 1745, maybe in here. Ooh, that looks cool inside. There's no one here and this probably won't be posted in March of this year, 2024 but just so you know it's march and so i feel like this is the off season between skiing's kind of coming down i see like a few more people coming off the hill now and the start of kind of spring so i do have my bubba marta bracelets on so if you're bulgarian and watching this i'm waiting for spring to come but yeah it's like nobody so it's kind of i wasn't expecting to make like a ton of friends but like there's just nobody and maybe because I came from Sofia, which is, I believe, the biggest city, or at least it's a huge city in Bulgaria. Maybe I'm just used to city life and like, I need to get used to old town life. Nobody. So just as I'm in this area, I was wondering the same thing that my self-guided tour told me. And the reason why the walls were so thick that in the 18th century, Bansko was quite rich with the import of currency from Western Europe. And there was a lot of robberies happening. So the way that they decided to solve this is to make thick walls. Each house is about two floors, which seems to be kind of consistent to present day in the more modern buildings. Like down this way, this one would be considered more modern. It maybe is three, two and a half, kind of three stories. Um, so the first floor was for domestic animals and storage, and the second floor was a room for living. This definitely looks like it's unfortunately got some fire damage. Yeah, Fred. 
friends. Yeah, so I just took a shower. I'm back in my uh, my room here. This lighting is also very bold. Anyway, after I came home from that house, that 18th century house that I got to tour, and then I just decided to walk and kind of walk freely, which led me to the ski area, which is where all the people are. So again, because there is a ski hill like right in town, there's definitely an area that's more of like a strip, I would call it in North American language, where there is kind of like fast food places, places to have a pint, kind of a pre-ski, Lots of like little shops and knickknack kind of thing. So I was like, ah, oh, this is where the people are. Hard to know if they are staying more in the older part of town, but also that area has a lot more of like these like five, six story apartment buildings, very ski village-esque. Came home, just relaxed for a little bit and then went back to that area actually to pick up some fast food, which I ended up picking up pizza, which is again, obviously Italian food, not Bulgarian food, but I just didn't really have the confidence or energy to sit and have like a sit down dinner by myself and try and find vegetarian food. Pizza was like probably some of the worst I've ever had, like just flavorless. But for Ten Lava, which is about five euros, I got two slices, so did the trick. Just had a shower. Gonna head to bed. Um, I've actually, for day two, you'll have to find out what happens, but I did change my bus to an earlier bus, so we are changing plans tomorrow. Time to rest now, and I will see you in the morning. Good night. Blago Daria, Blago Daria, Blago Daria, Blago Daria for watching. <laughs> Thank you. Day two in Bansko. Good morning. I'm so tired. This accommodation's so cute, but the bed is pretty shitty. And uh, there was like a big light on the whole evening, which I then woke up in the middle of the night. And my secret is you put your tube over your eyes for a darkening curtain, and that helped a lot. So today's goal is get ready, wake up. Go find coffee and breakfast, which this is one thing traveling. I love just having coffee and breakfast, like in bed in my PJs in the kitchen. And so going out to find it is like a rough life, I know. Um, I'm gonna come back here and actually have a meeting around 11 and check out's not till 12. So I'll have a meeting and then quickly check out. And then I'm gonna go explore the ski hill and then catch a bus at three o'clock, which I moved from six o'clock because I really just don't feel like there's much else to do unless I was planning an activity. So that being said, I feel like there's lots more to explore in the town. But if you were skiing or you were hiking or you rented bikes, like this kind of activity stuff, then it would be better. But solo traveling, I'm kind of like, I like to do that with people. Let me show you outside. Foggy, foggy morning. The sun is out. Knew it. If I didn't bring my sunglasses, the sun would be out. Mm, feels so good. It is a gorgeous yet very brisk morning. It's only about four degrees and I'm off to go find coffee slash breakfast. <clears throat> I'm hungry. Also this like wood burning smell. I don't know how to describe it. Kind of gives me like old museum wood burning. I don't know what kind of wood is being burned. Anyway, mountains are behind me. Today I've got on a, a turtleneck. It's one of the heat tech ones from Unico as well. And I do have two pairs of pants still on. <laughs> I've got on leggings and uh, pants over top. We'll see how long I keep them on because I probably won't want them on the bus because the bus was quite stuffy yesterday. Look at the mountain. Wow, what a shot this morning. How stunning. here to Cafe Elise which is in the main like town hall square just sitting outside so nice to feel the sunshine I love cold air and sunshine and got the mountain I 
just walked down the street and I got myself a Benissa for one lava, which is equivalent to 50 cents in euros, 75 cents. Not a bad breakfast. It's right next to the high school, so it has to be good. It's got cheese on the inside. A bit salty, but yeah. Alright, I've got food, I've got coffee, I've got my backpack. I'm all checked out of my room. Not really a hotel room. So I'm so glad I changed my bus time because it's quite heavy to carry around all day. I bought more water, which was dumb because now my backpack's heavier. Besides the point, we now enter like ski village area. Now I'm walking towards the ski hill, but not towards the ski lifts. And I just want to explore this area. There's a casino and just you know, like modern amenities, which take away from the authenticity of what the old town is. But it's kind of nice that there's this combo. So you could come here, you could do like a ski vacation and then be like, oh, but I want some history and some local Bulgarian food tradition and go down into the old town, which is like a 15 minute walk away. Kind of combo of both worlds. walked quite far and uh, there's a ski hill and a gondola. So the gondola, it seems to go really from the base all the way quite to the top, but not everyone looks like they have ski equipment with them. And I'm about to walk just onto the ski hill. Definitely do not have the right footwear. I know snow, so I'm not gonna walk that far, but uh, casually uh, crossing a bridge here. There's a skier. <laughs> now I'm on the hill. <laughs> tour of the Bansko gondola and ski lift. It seems like there's tons of places to rent equipment, not just on the hill. So definitely explore your options. I'm gonna kill about two hours before my bus. Just walking around town, grab another bite to eat, and I will catch you on the bus. Mm -hmm.